Hi, welcome into my studio. On this uh, short video, I'm just going to give you a brief look at how I uh, draw feathers. And you can see, I've got my pass on matte paper, I've done a bit on the head, and I'm just blocking in the outline or putting in the outline of the shapes of the main feather areas. Now, feathers like on this Lana Falcon can be very, very confusing, even when they are, you know, pretty much just one color. So there's not lots and lots of different colors on there. So you may think perhaps it'd be easier to use the pan parcels as I'm using now and just block in an undercolor. I decided against that. I wanted to make sure I kept the um, shapes and the areas and forms of the pastels in the correct places. So I've decided to do them more individually. Now there's a, a three hour version of this on my Patreon channel as well if you want to see it um, in a lot more real time, a lot more detail, a lot more tips and techniques on there. So as you can see, I'm just blocking in those major shapes and the best things I've found for those are my pan pastels. Now you can also do this with um, just soft pastels. You could even do it with pencils, but obviously it'd, it'd weigh the pencils down very, very quickly. Now by blocking in like this, obviously it's much easier than when I come to the detail stages, not for me to get lost in amongst these feathers and if there was lots of colors as well it'd be even um, easier to get lost in there. Now I like to keep my reference photo as close to the um, area I'm working on as well and what I'd normally suggest would be for you to print out your reference photo and then fold it so that you can put it really close to the actual drawing and when you're at the latter stages as well and you're really checking the critical aspects of color you can fold it perhaps in half offer it right up to your drawing right on top of it that'll make it nice and easy for you to judge the colors and judge the tones i say that to a lot of people that do the critique level on my patreon channel and um, i find when they actually start doing that the level of realism and detail make a massive jump in a very short time now another beauty with pan pastels, I can mix the colors on a piece of paper. You can see I just got some printer paper on that bottom section of the video. And I'm using that to blend colors together to get the tone that I, that I actually want there. And you can see as well, I'm going darker than the reference photo because I want a darker layer. It doesn't have to be too much darker, but at least slightly darker so I can get those top layers, those details to actually show up. Now the chest feathers on this Lana Falcon are quite soft looking and you can see here I'm putting some of the lighter tones in with a pastel stick and I've just sharpened that so that I've got a bit more control or you can just use the square edges on it. But you'll notice I, I actually blend with my finger quite a lot rather than get very distinctive marks on these feathers I want to keep that softness. So you can see I've got a variety of pencils there. This is a Derwent pastel pencil. My two favorites though, Carbothello and Pit Pastel. They're that little bit harder so I can get more detail. But for this particular subject, I wanted that softness and Derwent have a fantastic range of pinky tones in there. Tones that I don't use that frequently. So you can see, using the pencil, I got a piece of glassine paper to rest my hand on because I'm working flat so I can do the videos that much better for you all and putting my strokes in that direction that the um, feathers are actually growing in. So that's the technique that I use and then I treat it one feather at a time bringing it to probably 70 or 80 percent completion and with details then I come back into it once I've covered that as a whole and I really start to detail with pencils and sticks once again on top of that. So it's a process of layering of gradually becoming more and more refined and more and more accurate with colors, marks and details with each new layer.
And as I mentioned, with each new layer, more detail comes. I'm just finishing off a corner here when, once again with pan pastels. They are excellent for getting these subdued or blurred backgrounds. And you can also see the level of detail I brought the bird up to as well. So there's lots of different types of feathers, different elements from the hardness of the beak and the solidity of it to the glassy looking eye, that all those details on the face. So there's lots and lots to cover on this um, tutorial that I did, especially for my Patreon art channel. So if you want to learn more details, you want to learn uh, realism with pastels, I've got many, many hundreds of subscribers on there and you can get videos like this and access to uh, lots and lots of other videos for just about the price of a cup of coffee or two. So um, hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of feathers. Hope this helped you and I'll see you all again real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we've got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.